They say your family has to live here for three generations to be a true Mainer. If one generation decides to move to Massachusetts, well, sorry. Some might say your ties to Maine just suffered a setback. So it's only fitting that the first one I meet is Ken Lincoln, president of the Thompson Ice House and Museum in South Bristol. Ken's family goes back generations, and his accent tells the story for him. I need a couple sawhorses, a chair. Grab me two chairs out of the annex. Since 1990, he's led an ice harvest on Thompson Pond in South Bristol, where he grew up skating, fishing, and cutting ice. I feel like I'm in the world's largest freezer. I've never seen anything like this. And I'm standing on ice. I've never done that before. So I'm just trying to be, you know, cool about it. No pun intended. Hello. Baratunde. And Lincoln. Nice to meet you. Me too. Yeah. This is the most I've stood on ice in my life. Really? Yes. Well, try to stay on the ice. I definitely, I'm sticking with you. <laughs> that's right. <what> <laughs> no, that doesn't no. mean we're not going swimming. Oh, really? OK. <laughs> so what are we doing today? We're going to put some ice up. All right. Yeah. Same way they've done it for 200 years. 200 years. On this pond. Yeah. For Ken, harvesting ice is more than just nostalgia. It brought the community together. Local fishermen used the ice to keep their catch cold. Farmers used it for their meat and dairy. And regular people put it in their ice boxes, something rural Mainers were doing well into the 70s. People from the town would come together to work in the winter so they could reap the rewards in the summer. Today, it's important for Ken to keep that tradition alive. So every winter, he puts together a festival that attracts people from all over the world. And it gets a whole community. I mean, you've got kids out here, you got moms and dads. Oh, yeah. It's like a barn raising, but on ice. Show me how to do it. I'm not right here, doing. we're going to take this ball up here. So you start right here, cut back to here. OK. Cut back this side, okay. and then I'll break it loose. All right, I can grab this That one, one right there is good okay. and sharp. And no extra training besides that. I bet you fall right into it. <laughs> I don't want to fall into anything. <laughs> <Literally>. <laughs> At the turn of the 19th century, ice harvesting was big money. Up and down rivers and on hundreds of lakes, if it froze in the winter, people would hop on it with big saws, just like the one I'm using, and cut it up. It's just like the gym. A lot of the tools here are antiques, and the methods used haven't changed. Well, except now they use a truck instead of horses to haul up the ice blocks. That's a good workout. Once we release the edges of it, yeah. and then we'll break them off in a big raft. Right. And that way you can float them over to the channel, chunk them up, yeah. and in the house they go. This was my uh, grandfather's ice saw. And he cut ice on Dixon's Pond in Booton Township, New Jersey. We're gonna put it to work right now. Do that, please. We got a new saw to try out. Came from New Jersey, so I'm not sure how good it's gonna work, but. <laughs> I keep thinking I'm standing on ground, and uh, I, I prefer to think that. Otherwise, I will freak out. I'm standing on water. Every time he whacks at it, I can feel it. There's like an echo under my feet. And uh, that is not the most comforting feeling in the world, but they seem confident, so I'm confident. You want to start on that end? And just, I'll start this end. Okay. One hit, one hit, and this should come off as a big round. Okay. Oh, yeah! What? Breaking up the ice, sending it up the channels, just a bunch of locals working together. There we go. It's easy to see why rituals like this are part of what makes Maine, Maine. But technological advances, like your fridge's ice dispenser, aren't the only thing threatening this tradition. So what happened with that one? Warmer out today, uh, so you're getting a little bit more of that. Yeah, I blame the climate change. Hey, that's yeah. part of it. I mean, the last three years, we've had seven inches. And before that, we've had like 20 inches and two oh, feet before, yeah. Two feet of ice? Yeah, this is uh, not typical. Yeah, OK. As the outside crew was moving the ice up the channel, there's a whole other crew inside the ice house itself, where the blocks are stacked and stored. Each one weighs over 100 pounds. But if it's really cold, these blocks get thicker and heavier. 
I'm talking over 300 pounds a piece. 300 pounds of solid ice coming at you while you're standing on, you guessed it, even more ice. It looks like a recipe for getting crushed, but it also seems too fun to resist. Uh, hello. Wow. I have never been in an ice house before. Ooh, it's cold in here. It's cold in here. It's <laughs> not there. So I'm Kent Lincoln's son, Kyle. Hi, Kyle. Nice to meet you. Baritone, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. Thanks for coming and helping out today. Yeah. How many seasons have you done this? 30. 30 seasons. Woo. Not inside, though. Okay. I'm going to graduate up to that. So. Yeah? What's it like having this as a part of your family? It's part been of... a, a great experience, yeah. you know, um, learning just about the history, the, the real history of how mm. we used to keep things cold. Um, and, and getting to see it and actually experience it firsthand. You yeah. know, you can read about it all you want, but unless you're in this ice house, you don't understand yeah. how much work is it's involved. Like history you can interact with. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. What are we doing with this one? Go ahead, tug on it. Get it, yeah. hook it on the side. Coming at you, tug. Ah, I missed it. This is hard. Woo! Now I get why the most experienced ice harvesters get to work in here. These huge blocks have to not only be hooked, but then guided into place in a split second. Aside from dodging these things as they whiz around your ankles, you've got to worry about slipping and falling. Like many outdoor jobs, it requires a lot more grace than you think. And here in Maine, they take it in stride. Y'all are crazy in Maine, but this is real cool. You're hired. I want to thank you for showing me how to do this, letting me into the ice house. It's been a pleasure. Who wants my pick? <laughs> You're feeling so good. Oh, man, they're not going to let me go. I work here now. <laughs> no, but seriously, who was going to do that? I can't leave it unmanned. That feels irresponsible. <laughs> After all the ice has been stacked up and the crowd is gone, I'm still left wondering why people are so invested in this tradition. I'm hoping Ken can shed some light on that coolest building in Maine. It is, yeah. <laughs> it's a free one, you can use that. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Where are we right now? We are sitting on the Gat in South Bristol, Maine. And what's your connection to this, this Gat? Uh, been here my whole life. My mother grew up just up the street. Why have you stayed? It's, just look around. You know, it's a, it's a slow-paced life. Some people call it boring. I like the slow life yeah. this time of year. You can go up on that ice pond on a freezing cold day, and there's nothing around you, maybe a bird flying by, and the pond will talk to you. What do you mean by it, that? As it freezes, it, it buckles. Mm. And it's, it's just amazing to stand up there and listen to it. Yeah. How did you get started in the ice house? Well, I started skating up there when I was big enough to skate. And my father used to work it in like the 60s and early 70s. Yeah. So as I grew, we went up and helped him. And then when I was about 11 years old, I got the opportunity to go in the ice house. You had to be a certain That's age. A big deal. And it was a big deal. Yeah. You know, it's like graduating. <laughs> I get to go in the ice house, so. Seems like tradition is really important in Maine. Yes. And tradition is based on uh, stability. Yes. You know, including the weather and the climate and the environment and the water levels and yes. the temperatures and the creatures. So when all that's changing really quickly, when the temperature's changing quickly, yeah. how hard is it to maintain tradition? It's getting more difficult. For sure. I mean, cutting six inches of ice compared to 12, yeah. we're getting to the lower end of it that we won't be able to continue it mm. because it'll be too dangerous to get on the ice. Uh, there's other industries, fishing industry. I mean, they can only go so far to catch a lobster and keep it lucrative. Yeah. I mean, they can keep trying to go north, but it's going to chase them. Yeah. So if we don't have cold weather, it, totally changes the character of the state of Maine. Yeah. It'll be a different place. It won't be home. Mm. 
What is a desert when it rains all the time? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's an ice pond if it doesn't freeze? Yeah. Thanks so much, Ken. Thank you. It's been a real honor and pleasure getting to know you. It, yeah, it's yeah. been a good day. And I'm glad I didn't fall into the to the, the pond. pond yeah. It's not too late. <laughs> Thanks for watching. For more tales from the great outdoors, check out season two of America Outdoors with Baratunde Thurston. You can find us in the PBS video app or your local PBS station. Click the link in the description below to find out more.